today we're going to be carrying on with the alphabet tag. We're now on the letter D. For those of you that don't know what the alphabet tag is, it's essentially a video where I ask 10 questions that are related to a letter of the alphabet. I got the idea for this alphabet tag from another booktuber called Jim's Books, and I will leave a link to his series and YouTube channel in the description below. D is for dot dot dot, finish the word with your favourite D named author. For me, that's definitely going to be Dickens. David Copperfield and Bleak House are fantastic. Christmas Carol, great Christmas story, just everything I've ever read by Dickens I've really enjoyed, and so it couldn't be anyone else. In fact, I'm hoping that it might take a while because he has quite a lot of books and a lot of them are quite long, but I'm hoping that I can get through all of his books at some point, maybe next year, and either have a series where I go through each book, kind of like my Angela Carter video, and also do some ranking videos of his books because I think he's fantastic and I just want to read everything that he's read. D is for drama. What is your favourite play? I don't know that many plays, I don't really watch plays. I suppose something that I've only watched the film version, but it is basically exactly the same as the play, except for a few minor changes, would be Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf? It's such a good film with Liz Taylor and Richard Burton, and it's about this married couple that play these terrible games with each other, and they have these amazing fights. It also gets quite dark and sad in places as well. It's just a fantastic film. And since the film is more or less the same as the play in terms of the dialogue, I'm just going to go with that anyway, because it's basically the same thing. And I'm sure if I watched a version of the play, I would like it just as much as I like the film. D is for death. Which character death affected you the most? Probably the death of Veluther and Amu in The God of Small Things by Arundhati Roy. This is one example of a book, and there are very few, where I've almost been brought to tears by a character death. Which is interesting because it's a book where the characters, you learn of their deaths right pretty much from the beginning of the story. So you see it coming the whole time and their death scenes are actually part way through the story. And the actual sadness and pathos of their deaths comes at the very end of the story, which is, it's told out of time, this book. And in the last chapter, you have this moment where they're together and enjoying a night together. And it's a beautiful scene, but you know what's going to happen because you've seen how the story turns out. So you know that it's not a happy ending for them, it's just a moment in time in which they were happy. And I have to say that really boosted the tragedy of their death for me because not only was it devastating when they die, but then knowing that they could have had something wonderful together and that it was taken from them, and that being the very last thing that you see in the story, just makes their deaths even more impactful. And I think part of the reason for that is that when you're reading that final scene, because you already know what their death scene is, in the back of your mind you're thinking to yourself, well I know what happens to you at the end, and you're picturing that as you're picturing them have that moment. So it really adds to the drama of it, it makes it a lot more impactful and devastating. So yeah, if you want a death that knocks you, then i definitely read The God of Small Things. D is for Dahl. What is your favourite story by Roald Dahl? I mean I could say loads here. Green Eggs and Ham, The Grinch, James and the Giant Peach, there are loads, but I think the two that stick to my mind the most, because they're two that have fun stories attached to them, are The Fantastic Mr. Fox and The Twit. I like The Fantastic Mr. Fox because there was this person that I really didn't like in primary school when we read this book, and she had a farm and she had chickens, and I guess she didn't know that, you know, chickens on a farm get killed anyway, but she was like disturbed by this book, because obviously the fox is the protagonist and they kill the chickens. And I used to enjoy the fact that she hated it when we had to read the book out in class, because I didn't like her. So <laughs> that's why I like that book so much. I also like The Twits, and the reason why I picked The Twits is because it's a book that I read a lot as a kid, and I only actually remembered that I read it a lot as a kid when I was looking and doing research for this question and thinking about which ones I liked. And then I looked up The Twits, and I found out that Roald Dahl wrote this book because he hates people with beards. Or, or he hates beards, I guess he doesn't hate people with them, but he hates the beards. And he wrote this book essentially as a protest against beards, which I find funny. And as someone who also isn't that much of a fan of beards, I can kind of empathise with him on this point. D is for Dickens. What is your favourite book by Charles Dickens? I think at the moment that's going to be a toss-up between Bleak House and David Copperfield. I think both of these books are fantastic in their own ways. They're both massive books and quite challenging at times. And I think I will probably go with David Copperfield over Bleak House. Mainly because I just think David Copperfield is a fantastic story that just has all of the elements of human life in it. It's got comedy, tragedy, and everything in between. Whereas Bleak House is a little bit more gothic, a little bit more stylized with the story of Esther from her personal narrative, and then you've got the kind of third person narrator. And while those things are interesting, it just doesn't fill me with joy as much as David Copperfield does. So I'm going to go with David Copperfield on this one. 
but they're both five star books and definitely worth a read. D is for dark. What is the darkest book you have read? Quite hard to actually narrow this down because I've read a lot of books that are dark and some of them are just dark for very different reasons. 1984, for example, I would say is pretty dark just because of how bleak the ending of that story is. But then the rest of it isn't that dark, or at least it's not the darkest of the dark. There's also like Matthew Gregory Lewis's The Monk, which I love the ending of that story. If you haven't read much gothic fiction, especially gothic classics, I would definitely read that book. It's basically just the epitome of gothic darkness with hell and devils and a very gruesome death scene at the very end of the book. But I think I'm actually going to go with a book that I read relatively recently, because it's quite fresh in my mind of something dark that I read, and that's going to be The Sailor Who Fell From Grace by Yukio Mishima. This is a book about a very disturbed child and his, his group of friends who are basically psychopaths with some very disturbing ideas and they do something very disturbing in the course of the story. Not only do they do a disturbing thing but this kid like pervs on his mum and does all kinds of weird things. It's not dark in like a gothic sense but it's just dark in a sort of creepy unsettling way and the ending of the story is just you know it's one of those stories that doesn't show, show too much. It kind of ends at the moment that something terrible is about to happen and you know what's going to happen, or at least you can guess what's going to happen, but the story finishes before it gets to that point. So I think that's an example of something that's quite dark, but also quite restrained. I can't say it's necessarily the darkest thing that I've ever read, but it's certainly up there and it's a more recent example of something. D is for dreadful. What is the worst book you have ever read? I don't think I've ever read a book that I found truly dreadful, at least a fiction book. There are quite a few non-fiction books, I suppose, that I've just thought were stupid or annoying. But in terms of fiction, I think I'm just quite good at selecting books that I know I will like. But maybe a couple of examples from the reading club that I'm a part of where other people are picking the books so I don't have any control. Um, one of them would be The Line of Beauty. I can't remember who wrote it, but it's this story about being gay in the 80s and there's lots of political stuff in there and I just, I did not gel with the book at all. It was wonderfully written and there were certain parts of it that I liked but it just didn't gel with me and it was a book that I gave up on, which is quite rare for me to do. Another book, maybe quite controversial, is Dune. I did not like Dune when I read it and again it was another book that I just gave up on. I don't know what it was about the writing style. I didn't particularly like the way it was written. I didn't like the headings which basically give you a summary of what's going to happen in the chapter which just completely removes any tension. It just didn't, didn't gel with me. I might try it again because I, I do feel like it's a book that I would like if I tried it again, I don't know why. But yeah, it was another example of a book that I didn't particularly like. So that's pretty much it. In general I t tend, to, tend to like things or just not be that interested but I wouldn't say that they're dreadful. D is for dystopia. What is your favourite dystopian novel? Well I recently read We by Zemi Artin and I did think that was a pretty good dystopian novel but unfortunately Orwell is still going to take the cake for me. I think that both 1984 and Animal Farm are just fantastic examples of dystopian literature. I still haven't read anything that's topped either of them really and I think that might just be how it stays. If you have a book though that you think is better than 1984, a dystopian novel, let me know what it is and I will read it and we'll see if we can uh, make me change our mind. But I really like 1984, I think it's wonderfully written, I really like the ending and just the way that hope is just drained from Winston and also from the reader. It's just fantastically dark and that's what I like in my dystopian fiction. D is for duology. What is your favourite two book series? Not really sure why I asked this question because I haven't read any duologies but I am currently or I have Faust part two on my shelf by Goethe so I will read that and then I'll let you know once I've read it. D is for Desert Island. What five books would you take with you to a desert island? Quite a hard question to ask because I think depending on the day it might actually change the kind of book that I would like to take. But I'll go with kind of general categories of books that I like and just pick one from each. So I'd want to take some poetry and for that I'd probably take Leaves of Grass by Walt Whitman. I love that collection. I've read it once. I'm probably going to be reading it again very soon because I just think there's so much in it. It's just very strange poetry. It's not something that you've, you would expect or not something that I expected. And even though it's strange, it's still readable and digestible in a way that some poetry is just too abstract and weird. So that would be the poetry that I would take. In terms of classics, I would take David Copperfield because it's a fantastic book and it's a very long book with a lot in it. So if you're going to be stuck on an island for a long time, it's nice to have a tome that you can read again and again and again with lots of different things going on. I'd obviously take Wuthering Heights because I love that story. I would also take Nights at the Circus by Angela Carter because I'd want something that's 
still got something about it, but it's also quite fun and light-hearted, which Knights of the Circus is. I'd also want to take some fantasy, and for that I think I would take, at the minute, Clive Barker's Imagica, because I think it's, again, it's a long book, so that's quite nice for a desert island, but also I just think it's a fantastic uh, story. It's an urban fantasy, but then the characters go into this whole new world that Barker creates with, I think it's five dimensions. Each of these worlds has its own style, its own culture, and it's just very impressive. And it's an example of a fantasy story that is sprawling and epic, but without taking, you know, 14 books like The Wheel of Time, or seven books, or six books. And I think that's really impressive, you know, just being able to tell a story of that magnitude, but just containing it in one book. So those would be the five books that I would take with me to a desert island. At least for now, maybe that's going to change in the future. All right, that's it for these questions. Let me know how you'd answer these questions in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a like and subscribe to my channel. And that's it for this video, so take care everyone. Ta-ra!